Now that we know that it was not in fact a pandemic of the unvaccinated, now that we know that Ukraine is not actually winning the war against Russia, it could be time to revisit some of the other slogans we've been assured are true and ordered to repeat. Are they in fact true? Did, for example, a racist white cop actually murder a man called George Floyd, a civil rights leader, in Minneapolis on Memorial Day of 2020? He didn't murder George Floyd. And we're not guessing about that. We know it conclusively, thanks to a new court case now underway in Hennepin County, Minnesota. The case was brought by a prosecutor there called Amy Sweezy. She's suing her boss. So the case is not actually about George Floyd or Derek Chauvin, but it tells you an awful lot about both of them. In her deposition, which you should read, Amy Sweezy describes a conversation that she had with the county medical examiner, Andrew Baker, right after George Floyd died. Quote, I called Dr. Baker early that morning to tell him about the case and to ask him if he would perform the autopsy on Mr. Floyd. Sweezy recalls all this under oath in the deposition. Quote, he called me later in the day on that Tuesday and he told me that there were no medical findings that showed any injury to the vital structures of Mr. Floyd's neck. There were no medical indications of asphyxia or strangulation. Oh. Was George Floyd actually killed by Chauvin? Let's talk about it. This video is brought to you by freedomuniversity.com. Freedomuniversity.com is my wife's new store. She got all the cool merch. People have been begging her to put California on a shirt because she originally had Los Angeles ruined by Democrats. But people are like, California ruined by Democrats. People are asking her to make every single state run by Democrats. Uh, she may do it down the line, but if you go to the link in the description section, it says shopfreedomuniversity.com. Shopfreedomuniversity.com and you can get one of these shirts. Like and subscribe to the channel. Y'all already know what to do. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to make a, a quick video about this George Floyd thing because just in recent news, there's information that have come out and of course AP, Associated Press and others have come out to try to debunk it as soon as possible. But what they did was they ended up making me go back and recovering something that I think most people are not talking about. Now, let me just say this very clearly. I wrote a book on uh, policing in America. It's called Beating Black and Blue, Being a Black Cop in, in an America Under Siege. You can get that book on my store somewhere. Or you can get it on Amazon, wherever you want to buy your books at. I say buy it for me because I can sign it and do all that other stuff. But anyway, I wrote a book about it. And in the section of my book, I talk about the George Floyd and Chauvin in, in a, encounter. What I will say is that, I mean, it's obvious to me that Chauvin was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. And no cop in America would agree that you should kneel on a person that long. The guy saying he can't breathe. You do nothing to suffice that. You do nothing to render aid. You let him die, pee his pants, and you still get up, don't get off the guy. At, 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 at bare minimum, you did not render aid or did not see how the guy was doing when he was making that claim. So you, you, Chauvin was an idiot in my book. But does that mean that the court ruling was what it should have been? Does that mean that Chauvin should have went to prison for the charges that they accused him of? Or was this a racket? Now, let me say this. Uh, your boy, George Floyd, was a criminal. Everybody knows he's a criminal. I don't think it gets him off the hook either because Chauvin was, was doing something he shouldn't have done. George Floyd was also doing something he should have done. I call it the tale of two idiots. But let's talk about this recent news that have come out. Now, I searched the Internet long and wide. Couldn't find anything about this. I couldn't find anything except for Associated Press article that they are attempting to want to debunk. They're not giving you information. They're just, the article is just made to debunk. So let me make it bigger so you guys can see it and, and possibly read it as well. But the entirety of this article is to debunk the idea of George Floyd's autopsy. So it says George Floyd's autopsy report is not new, does not say he died of an overdose. Now I want you guys to consider this because we do this and make these these ignorant claims on our side as conservatives, listen to the people that don't do their homework, and then we end up looking crazy. But what I will say is this. It says the autopsy or whatever, it makes the claim, and it says that the uh, fact check is that the social media users have been sharing pages of, of the 20 pages of the autopsy report, which also was released in 2020, is not anything new, which is true. It's not new. They released the report. And people are saying that there's new information in the report and that the report – uh, made mention or people are just now being aware of, of a pulmonary, I think it's like car, uh, cardiopulmonary arrest, which is a heart attack. We're well, not a heart attack, which is when your oxygen and your heart 
and that is not vibing together and it's insufficient enough to carry your body on to victory, you begin to die. Right. That means if your heart is not pumping enough oxygen, you're not getting enough intake of oxygen, the whole oxygen, blood, uh, uh, cardiovascular system is affected. And and then therefore you will probably experience what they consider to be a cardiopulmonary arrest. Now, that's how he died. It didn't say from drug overdose or anything of that nature, but it also did not explicitly articulate that it was nothing else that could be ruled out. Now, I will say this. After reading this article, of course, it's biased and they're just making the claim. What it made me do is go back to another article that was written in 2022. And I began to read the article and I noticed something very, very suspicious in this article. If you go through, it talks about the autopsy and all of these things. And it says that the the uh, original medical examiner, which is Dr. Andrew Baker, has said that the police officer subdued, restrained, and put neck pressure onto George Floyd, which caused him to have these side effects or the side effect of cardiac arrest is because he was suppressed with his oxygen. His heart was enlarged, normal, or or bigger than a normal-sized person, and therefore it needed more oxygen than the average person, which you can see right here. But what interested me more than any of this is this second part. And it, let me see, it goes here. And they go on to say that Baker said his office received hundreds of calls. And and before this, and I'll put the link in the in the description section, but it said that, or at least he testified, that he originally did not have neck pressure or anything related to the cop as being the primary factor of his death. He did not originally have those things. But he also testified, and this was written in 2022, that Baker said that his office received hundreds of calls, some of harassing and some were harassing and threatening. But this is the kicker. Former Washington, D.C. medical examiner, Dr. Roger Mitchell, who is an expert in custody death, called Baker and was unhappy with and unhappy with him. And Baker said, too, they talked about it. And she pretty much convinced him to put neck pressure in his autopsy. That's pretty much what it say right here. You can read it for yourself. I'll put the link in the description. I'll read it right here so you can see it just in case you don't have time to read it. It says, Baker said his office received hundreds of calls, some harassing and threatening. Former Washington, D.C. medical examiner, Dr. Roger Mitchell, who is an expert on in-custody death, also called Baker and was unhappy. Baker said the two talked about neck pressure or compression, and Mitchell also planned to publish a critical op-ed in the Washington Post against him. It says Baker said he considered Mitchell's opinion and and, and analysis before adding neck pressure to his report. What do you think this is saying? Now, I'm not taking nothing away from Chauvin because he, he, you know, he had no business doing exactly what he did. But also, can we also consider that the medical examiner was bullied with harassing and threatening phone calls to his office, which he had never experienced before. Or the medical examiner from Washington, D.C., giving him a call saying she's unhappy and and, and decided to write an op-ed against him. I don't know if this is a girl or a boy. Am I reading her name right? Baker said. That was going to write an op-ed against him. Right? And then after listening to Mitchell, he reconsidered and put neck compression. Let me explain what I think happened. Chauvin, which he was being respectful at the beginning, after George Floyd began to ramp his behaviors up, Chauvin ramped his behaviors up, and I believe he was using force against, uh, applying pressure against George Floyd. I think he was trying to show an example to the rookies and he was feeding off of the crowd and he knew that he wasn't applying enough pressure 
that if he applied that same pressure to a normal person, it would be okay, right? I don't think he was kneeling on his neck and killing him. I think he was more so on his shoulder. That was a tactic that was trained in the Minneapolis Police Department, so he was not out of policy, and normally that would not have killed somebody. But with him feeding off the crowd, which was probably ticking him off even more, and him trying to show and be an example to the rookies of how to control a suspect, he did it too long. He did not believe George Floyd when he said he couldn't breathe. George Floyd probably couldn't breathe at that point, but he didn't believe him because everybody does this. Everybody lies. Everybody comes up with this idea uh, of I'm going to make excuses to get out of this kerfuffle. However, George Floyd was probably experiencing cardiac incident because of resistance that he was giving the police officers mixed with all of the toxic, murderous drugs that he had ingested into the system. All of that combined together began to make him go into cardiac arrest or they call it cardiac cardi, cardiopulmonary arrest. That means that he's not getting enough oxygen. It's not enough blood oxygen pumping through his body. Then therefore he succumbs to that particular um, asphyxiation or what not asphyxiation, but that particular stoppage of uh, the heart. Now with that being said, Chauvin don't know this. So his intent is not there. But at the same time, if he probably would have checked on him and rolled him over, he may have seen that he was experiencing this. The same thing happens. It's, it's the these in-custody deaths, and they call it excited delirium in a lot of other situations. That's when you take a, a drug that makes you extremely high, like it gives you extreme high, and you become invincible. But then when you start crashing, your body starts crashing all the way down to cardiac arrest. That means that you became superhuman but then when your body start, when that start wearing off and the adrenaline start wearing off, the body starts to depress all the way to cardiac arrest. That means everything is, is slowing down in, in recovery all the way to the, to the point of death. Now, I don't know why they didn't call this excited delirium, but this is very similar to excited delirium. You got some substance in your body and the trigger of resisting arrest caused your body to go into this episode. The same thing happened to uh, the big dude in New York. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. It's the same thing that happened to him. They begin to, to use force against him, and then his body and all of the contributing factors caused him to go into a cardiac incident. It wasn't necessarily the police fault. It was his fault for resisting. That resistance led the body to react. The body then reacted negatively. In George Floyd's case, because he had an enlarged heart, something that's bigger and, 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 and unprecedented, uh, to other people's heart. He needed more oxygen than normal. So that level of laying prone and that level of resistance and probably ha not having enough oxygen to, to breathe, maybe him also taking those drugs and over-exaggerating his experience caused him to go into cardiac incident. But a lot of people are upset about this. I don't think there's anything new. They already litigated this in court, but I do think it exposes that this wasn't as clear cut as people may think it was. It does expose that the, 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 the medical director could have been compromised. It also exposes that people didn't pay attention in 2020 and they did not watch the trial. Now I'll say this to finish it off. I should have said it at the beginning. If you look at the charges, the charges are consistent with what they're able to prove that he did, right? His negligence, his behaviors, we're not rendering aid. Like all of those things are contributing factors. If the, if the autopsy had come back, more appropriately, maybe he wouldn't have got as much time in prison. But at the same time, Chauvin does have responsibility in this. But the primary action, the kneel on the neck, you need on his neck till he died, I don't think is what necessarily causes death. I think the contributing factors, the, the initiation of that inertia of the physical body going through trauma caused his already messed up body, his already drug-induced body to start to go down a path of no return. I don't think Chauvin, if he got off his neck, got on his neck, got off his neck, it, it probably wouldn't have prevented this. But what, what it would have shown is that Chauvin attempted to render aid. Chauvin attempted to act in good faith. And that could have saved them in the trial. But anyway, I'll see you on the next one. I'm out. <laughs>